Hello, I'm Kim Solnes, Chair of the Banff Foundation for Allograph Pathology. At the upcoming ASHE Banff Joint Scientific Meeting in Pittsburgh, I will be presenting on September 23rd a digital pathology white paper and proposing the creation of a new Banff working group on digital pathology. Many of the issues that have emerged as we worked on the white paper are bigger than transplant pathology. In fact, they affect the future of all of pathology. It was felt that it would be good to have substantial discussion of some of the issues before the meeting, and that's why we are circulating these interrelated documents two weeks before the meeting. Please let us know your thoughts. Recently, an academic pathology department was described in CAP Today that's reinvesting in traditional glass slide consultation. Bigger, multi-headed microscope rooms with transparent walls so pathologists can more easily locate other pathologists they may wish to show their glass slides to for face-to-face -face consultation. The exact opposite of digital pathology. Local decision-making about digital pathology is often described, as it is in that reference, as something very complicated and fraught suggesting that those in charge have lost sight of the big picture. Digital pathology is a part of digital medicine, a part of the technological future that is unlikely to be stopped or slowed down. Resistance to digital medicine is futile, and digital pathology will proceed with or without pathologists, because artificial intelligence, personalized medicine, and genomics Initiatives depend on it. The without pathologists option is becoming more and more of a reality as the number of pathologists in the U.S. plummets. As noted in the May 31st, 2019 George Lundberg editorial in JAMA, and fewer and fewer med school graduates choose to go into pathology. Pathology is not only the most unpopular medical specialty in the U.S., it's unattractiveness compared to other specialties, that shocking separation from the others on the graph developed quickly, recently, and continues to grow, as this graph shows. It is not business as usual where individual academic pathology departments can make whatever archaic decisions they wish about digital pathology and all will be fine. Medical students are learning pathology from digital pathology educational sites and resources like amboss.com. They're very unlikely to choose to train in a pathology department that has opted not to go digital, at least for education. Complacency is not an option. Carpe diem, seize the day. Pathologists need to regain control of their own destiny and opt for, at the very least, a modest investment in digital pathology for education. They need to focus on offering shadowing experiences to medical students and being charismatic role models so that more of our own medical students choose pathology as a career. The percentage of trainees in U.S. pathology training programs who are U.S. med school grads has been below 40% and dropping every year for the past three years. We need to turn that trend around. It's possible to do that. Could be accomplished as early as the 2020 match. We are not just trying to make people think about this, these matters. We want them to act. Our intention is to change pathologist behavior, turn these adverse trends around. If we do not do that, pathology as we know it will be a thing of the past. Changing pathology behavior is not just an abstract concept. Right now in studies that mandate whole slide imaging, one can encounter cynical pathologists who are just going through the motions in seeming to comply with the request for slide scanning. The result is that their scan slides are full of out of focus dirt specks from not cleaning the slides. And these dirt specks are now immortalized for the next thousand years. 
And when the protocol calls for immunoperoxidase C4D, they instead substitute immunofluorescent C4D, completely transparent, and scan those under ordinary light microscopic conditions, resulting in a lunar landscape bubble sculpture of no value to anyone. And although scanning at 40x is recommended, they scan at 20x because that's faster. And now all the mouse over magnifications just show an enlarged out of focus view present absolutely nothing to the information already present in the 20x view. Just irritating empty magnification. For a medical student encountering slides scanned by someone whose heart is not in it, this can be a strong factor dissuading them from a career in pathology. One can imagine that in the future, such rude digital scanning behavior will result in being ostracized by society. There will be consequences. It is possible to scan fluorescent slides under UV light. Making them digital really brings the fluorescent slide to life. Able to express the full dynamic range of fluorescence intensity and greatly adding to the excitement of fluorescence presentations. No more audience going to sleep with the immunofluorescence slides being shown. The medical political forces I talked about in the beginning, driving digital pathology, the strong momentum that ultimately cannot be resisted is also not just an abstract concept. The CAP, the College of American Pathologists in the U.S., established a comment period from June 28th to July 19th, 2019, to consider draft updates in the 2013 Validating Whole Slide Imaging for Diagnostic Purposes in Pathology Guidelines. On Tuesday, September 24th, the day after our presentation in Pittsburgh, they're having a big meeting. The CAP is meeting with three other organizations at CAP 19, the American College of Radiology, the Association of Pathology and Informatics, and the Digital Pathology Association in a special session to discuss digital pathology and AI. This provocative session which has a transplant pathologist, Dean Wallace, participating, will explore how the practices of pathology and radiology are evolving in light of innovations in artificial intelligence and structured and integrated reporting. The topics of the meeting include summary of activities related to artificial intelligence and structured reporting from the perspectives of the participating organizations. Exploration of the future practice of diagnostic medicine encompassing pathology and radiology in both community practices and academics. And a proposal for future collaboration based on participant input and feedback. It is fair to say that digital pathology is not just the passing fad. Resisting digital pathology locally will result in exclusion from more and more initiatives in the future, further contribute to the unpopularity of the specialty of pathology and lead to further decline in the number of U.S. medical students entering pathology training. I welcome your comments on these matters. Please write to me at kim.solas at ualberta.ca by September 22, 2019. Thank you very much.